Hey guys, just wanna do a quick video on basically my comparison between four email providers. I know that um, this is an oldie video that I'm posting out here. I realized that I didn't like post this anywhere, so I just wanted to share it with you guys since I had already created it, but it's all the same, um, I think from uh, back in the day. So basically I compare uh, four different email providers, Mailer, uh, Lite, uh, MailChimp, Drip, and ConvertKit. And to this day, I'm still using Drip because I have a ton of different like niche sites and YouTube channels that I have, and so it allows me to have one account where I'm managing all of that. Um, I know that uh, ConvertKit has a free version. I think they announced it like last year sometime, um, but it doesn't have all the features like um, being able to kind of drip emails. So just be aware of that if you're signing up for uh, that free um, email service. So anyway, if you guys have any questions at all, please uh, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be more than happy to help. So the big four are MailChimp, MailerLite, convert kit and then drip okay and I'm not gonna be able to show you MailChimp because it requires me to sign up and all that stuff but um, what I will say is my preferred uh, campaign manager automation sequence email provider thing is actually drip okay uh, the reason why is I use convert kit and it seemed a little bit clunkier on uh, I, I felt like it was a little clunkier and mailer light was a uh, really more clunky than um, what Drip had to offer. Okay, and I decided to upgrade my plan because I just need convenience and the convenience factor is huge when you are a side hustler and you don't have a lot of time to kind of finagle with um, a software that, you know, you, where you just need to get content created versus like trying to spend hours trying to, uh, you know, go and use the free version, which is clunky and it's just going to take up more time that you should have been using to create content anyway. So just wanted to preface that uh, conversation. I'm going to show you the tools and basically talk through what I liked or didn't like. First up is Miller Lite. So I'm going to go ahead and create an automation in here so that you guys can see what that looks like. Um, so I'll go ahead and create a new workflow. And then I'm going to set up a workflow trigger. So uh, new member who joins our subscription list because they, I guess, found a recipe on my mom's blog. Uh, I'm gonna say that, hit save, and then I can go ahead and create a um, delay of let's say one day, or maybe not, I won't create a delay, I'll go back. I will send them an email directly right away. And so here's your recipe, okay? Click on design email, and notice how it has that little button or that little icon that shows you the progress. And like, for whatever reason, I just get really annoyed with that. Um, so I'm gonna say, hey, here's your free recipe. What's really annoying is if I wanna delete this, okay, hit done editing, it'll say that unsubscribe link is required. So if you lose that text, what happens is you have to put this unsubscribe link and you can't just um, add this in there like this, okay? I'll hit save again. You actually have to unsubscribe. This is what I'm gonna to link to, and it's really weird. Okay, so you click highlight that, you click on the little attach, you put in the URL, okay, you hit okay, and if I hit okay, it's still not gonna save. So what you actually have to do is unsubscribe, subscribe, then hyperlink this hyperlink it, hit OK, and then hit cancel. And then it'll save. And it like, it's slow. You see how it's like, it's kind of lags a little bit. That that was really annoying for me. So I'll delay it like, let's say one day for the next email. Hit save. And then hit add and then email. And recipe two. Hit design email. And I, I just feel like it just goes back and forth really slow. Um, Conti here, hello there. All right, hit done. And then you'll notice like it just, I don't know, it's just really slow for me. And if I want to go ahead and just turn it on, new member, turn it on. Okay, now it's on. Okay, where's the button? You have to go back up here to the automation list and now you can see it. What if you wanted to see like your emails um, so that you can like edit them as you need to because you have a link or whatever that just needed to be updated. You actually have to go in and click on this right here like this and then actually see your emails this way and then you can't really edit it from here. 
you actually go into the automation to, to edit it. So here you go. You can't really edit it here. See that? You have to go back to the automation to edit it. So if I wanted to do that, I'd go back in. And then I edit the workflow and then go in and edit my emails. The problem is like, if I highlight this, I feel like I should be able to see the text and edit it instead of like going in and going back and forth, trying to figure out, you know, this is the link that I updated, going back and seeing if I update the other links. So to me, it felt just really clunky and I like spent so much time trying to figure out how to make it more efficient. I was like copying and pasting into um, a notepad and trying to do all my emails in there and paste it. And then I forget, like, did I paste it in recipe two or recipe three? So that's what I didn't like about Mailer Light. It is, it is a great free option if you don't want to spend any money and you want to create automation. Um, it was the first one I started with, but then once I started figuring out that, hey, it's consistency that's the key in creating emails um, on a weekly basis. So I add to my content uh, that was really important. And so I needed to be able to save time. So then I went to ConvertKit, which is uh, less expensive than Drip. And so here I'm going to show you what it looks like um, with the automation uh, with ConvertKit. I'm going to go ahead and create a new automation here. Create automation. And then I'm going to say when someone uh, joins the form, okay? So I'm going, or maybe is added to a tag. So I'll just say test tag, okay? Add event. And then I can send an email sequence. You see how I can send an e create a sequence? Let's see, email sequence test. Add action, okay. And then, so they'll get the email sequence. So once they're... Uh, set up on my site to get the lead magnet. I add a tag and then they get the email sequence. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is go in and create the sequence. And this is the email sequence that they would get. So if they were uh, wanting a recipe, um, I would use the email sequence in here. And so it's really awesome because I can actually create emails after emails like this and actually see the emails. You see how awesome that is? And then when to send uh, one day after the last email. That's how easy it is. Instead of having to create a bunch of that, a bunch of like delays and workflows, it looks like a video diagram and then reopening them. You can literally see all your content in here like this. Okay. Um, and then if I went ahead and save all, it even has reports, which is awesome. That tells you how many people opened it. I'm going to go back to landing pages and forms. And so you can create a form in here that you can embed into your site. So I can go ahead and choose this one. And I think that was it. Like it was pretty easy um, to set up. I mean, I can't remember why I moved to ConvertKit. Maybe I'll go or ConvertKit to Drip, but I'll show you that here in a minute. But honestly, it was a lot easier to go ahead and add tags and all that um, in there. So um, now I'm going to show you Drip, which is what I use today. So what I have is a list of all of my um, campaigns that I have here. So these are email sequences. So um, I've got, for example, this, uh, you know what, I'll go create a new campaign um on my other one so let's say it's for bloggers you guys right um i'm gonna go to campaigns here and if someone wants to learn about email sequences um this is saying nickerson okay i don't know why i have farmhouse decor in here but i'll create a new campaign called bloggers who want to know about uh oh email sequences I'll go ahead and create that campaign there. And then um, what I can do is go create my email, my first email. I'm going to do a text builder. And then I'll say, thanks for joining. I think it was a double opt-in. That was, I think, the problem. Um, I'm going to hit save. So in the settings for this campaign, um, I can actually see like 
whether or not I want the double opt-in to be on. What that means um, for a double opt-in is that when someone subscribes, they get an email saying, hey, do you want to confirm to being on this list? And then you can send them that first email. A double opt-in turned off means that they just get your email instead of having them confirm. Um, A lot of people say that you should have them confirm because then um, you really want that person on your list. And if they really didn't want to be on your list, then um, they didn't confirm, which means that you won't have to pay for that subscriber for uh, your email service. But I tend to like not confirming because I don't like to confirm emails um, whenever I subscribe. So that's why I turn it off. But I think that was the big thing with... um, when comparing to ConvertKit, because I don't think ConvertKit actually had that option. Let me see here. Um, that's why I think I went with uh, Drip. But I will say that with um, ConvertKit, they actually have a P.O. box. Um, we I actually had to get a P.O. box for uh, my blog to send emails, but Convert. Yeah, ConvertKit has a P.O. box that you can use if you don't have a a P.O. box and you don't want your physical address to be shown on emails because that is a legal requirement to have an email or a a physical address that someone can like email to you. Okay, so that um, in a nutshell is what I like about ConvertKit over Drip. But overall, Drip has made it really easy for me to just see the emails as well. So I can create an email right here. See that? And say why you need a list to build up your list. And then um, I can hit save and this will take the same settings because this is the sequence and then this setting for um, for the double opt-in is for that campaign, obviously, because that makes sense because that's the second email, okay? Um, but it's not as cool as like, um, convert kit where like you can see the emails on the right um, and see what they've written but I mean it's just as easy here to go in and look and it's way easier than mail uh, mail or light for sure but then what's really cool about it is like you can actually have um, people tag to certain things so for example if I wanted my audience to be tagged for people who want to to know about SEO versus Pinterest versus emails, um, I can tag them and then start creating automations and sequences uh, based off of that. So here I can go ahead and go to workflow and let's say I wanted to create a new workflow and I will call this people or bloggers uh, who want to write email sequences. I can create workflow and then I can say, hey, Um, anytime that someone performs an action, let's say drip, um, they are subscribed. Let's see, subscribe, um, or start a campaign. So campaign, send a campaign. Bloggers who want to know about email sequence, send a double restart the campaign when the action fires and continue sending campaigns even if a goal is achieved. Um, I typically will go ahead and click on update action. And so my trigger would be anytime time um, is added with a tag. Okay, so that's what that is. Um, but overall, this is how you create an automation and um, in a sequence in drip. I hope that helps you understand like the kind of the clunkiness of uh, some of the tools and why you might prefer one over the other. For me, I think the tagging was is what um, drove it over the top for drip. And then convert kit, I love because you could see the emails on the left panel really easily. Um, And then uh, mail or light, that was free and I was able to use that. And then uh, MailChimp, you can't use the free version um, unless you subscribe, but that's the same for Drip and ConvertKit. So all of them have their pros and cons. Choose what works best for you. But overall, the intention is that you want to get people to your site by creating a lead magnet, whatever it is. And that lead magnet could be that first email that just includes a link to your PDF. Um, And then you create a sequence after that. So um, you should at least spend a day and create 10 emails to kind of bump up that sequence and then if you do it for, um, if you create a email sequence uh, per week, you'll have 52 emails um, in that sequence um, for the purposes of either driving people to your site 
or um, selling them on your product. So now that you guys kind of saw an overview of a comparison of all of the different um, email providers, what I'm gonna tell you is at the time of this recording, which is 2021, I know that Miller Lite is still free um, to a certain extent. Um, ConvertKit I'm looking at, and it's $29 a month for up to 1,000 subscribers, but that's like one blog um, that you run out of it. I use Drip because I have like four emails going, and for 3,000 uh, people on my list, across all of my lists, I pay 49 uh, $49 monthly, which is not bad at all. So anyway, um, if you guys want a comparison on why I chose Drip versus ConvertKit, because ConvertKit, while it is free um, for up to a thousand people, you don't get the automation. Like if you wanted to, you know, pre-write uh, all of your emails, like you don't get that with the free version. You have to pay $29 starting out. But with Drip, um, what's great about it is that um, you can have like four or five or six even, I think, accounts underneath it under a main account and then be able to do like a bunch of niche like email campaigns. So I have one for the cooking blog, I have one for the lifestyle blog, I have one for the tech blog and so they're all different and they all are under the same price structure. Now if I were to go and sell one of the sites that might be a different story. I'd probably create a brand new one for it altogether for the drip account but um, I'm going to own these sites and so basically I can have one account with uh, child basically accounts where they have their own email list and email campaigns and they're all, not all mixed up. So I hope that gives you guys an idea of why I chose Drip over all the other options. ConvertKit is great, honestly, if you're starting out and you're still learning how to do tags and get people on into different funnels and segment your customers and target your list and all that. Like it's a great, great platform to use. And I really like the ease of use of like how you can write the emails and see them in one view. Um, you can't necessarily do that with Drip. Um, it's a few more clicks in order to get to all the different emails. If you guys like videos like this, make sure you click on the like button. That will really help me out in terms of the YouTube algorithm so I can create more content like this for you guys in the future. And again, if you guys like videos like this, go ahead and check out my other video on emails. And um, hopefully that gives you some insight on how I manage my email list. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care.